Well, we're here on Rangi Toto, this time with Graham Leonard. He's a volcanologist from GNS Science. This guy knows all about volcanoes. Now, they call Auckland the city of sails. What yep. about the city of volcanoes? Graham, I can see heaps of volcanoes just standing here. Yeah, so from here, just really quickly, I can roughly count about 10 volcanoes. You're standing on Rangitoto, mm. and then we have uh, Motokuria, uh, Mongarei, Mongakeakea, Mount St. John, Mongafai. Then you've got the domain with the museum sitting on the edge of it, and you've got the two over there on the North Shore. Does the fact that there's a lot of volcanoes around the city, does that create the risk, or is it sort of a bit more complicated than that? Well, look, volcanoes are a totally natural process, right? We're on the ring of fire, we get earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunami. They're a natural part. They're what, they're what a part of us being thrust out of the ocean in the first place. It's 1.5 million people living on top of these volcanoes that's creating a risk to those people. Yeah. So, well, so what are the risks of a, an eruption? The volcanic field's about 30 kilometers across, and the volcano and the city itself is about 30 kilometers right across on exactly the same spot. Yeah. And it's coming from magma that's about 100 K down. And every time it comes up, it takes a different path. That's why there's volcanoes all over the place. So we're not sure where it's going to erupt. And we don't, we can't, because it's so far down, we can't pick it up rising right at the beginning. So when we pick it up, it's already on its way. So it could rise quite quickly to an uncertain location. But what would happen when that magma starts to rise is it's going to be cracking the Earth's crust on its way up through the ground. And that cracking will start generating earthquakes in the rock around it. It's breaking rock. And we'll pick that up on our seismometers. And as it comes up further and further, it's going to be uh, kind of uh, vibrating the rock around it because it's bubbling magma moving along. And there's gas coming out of it as well. And that creates something we call tremor. So you'd start feeling earthquakes at the Earth's surface. Gas would be coming off the magma. So you might start smelling gas, or it might be CO2, which you're not going to smell, but hopefully we might be able to detect. Mm -hmm. And as it gets closer to the Earth's surface, you might start getting steam vents and fumarolic activity, that kind of thing. Ultimately, it's going to erupt. If it erupts like a place like this, where we're close to the water, or there's a lot of groundwater and it's flat ground, it could be quite explosive because it could interact with that groundwater. Or you might get scoria cones from fire fountaining of magma into the air, or you might get lava flows, and it could go back and forth between those different things. And then on top of that, there are quite a lot of volcanoes in the last few tens of thousands of years. The youngest one, Rangitoto, is only 550 years old. So, and it's the biggest, and it's the most complex, and it's a little bit different from the other volcanoes as well. So it could happen anytime, anywhere, and because Rangitoto is a bit of an oddball, all bets are off. What are the real dangerous parts? What's the biggest risk to people? So the biggest risk in terms of distance from that vent comes from those explosive eruptions, from those Mara volcanoes. Those big holes in the ground are from explosions that blow out rocks into the air, but more importantly, pyroclastic density currents. Surges are the kind that come from lots of water and magma, and they shoot out from the vent, and they can go quite a few kilometers, five or six or more kilometers wow. away from the vent. That's the main thing we worry about that might lead to quite widespread evacuation by Auckland Emergency Management. Graeme, you talk about picking up tremors in the earth and detecting gas coming out of the earth yep. and that sort of thing. Is that the sort of work that scientists are doing to monitor likely future eruptions? Yeah, that's right. There's two ways we, we help manage the risk that comes with living on top of an active volcanic field like this. We have science research programs. We have the Devora program, mm -hmm. determining volcanic risk in Auckland. So that's co-funded by EQC and Auckland Council. And it's jointly run by GNS Science and the University of Auckland and has scientists from all over the country involved. And that works on understanding and reducing the risk. And then in terms of the chance of magma coming up under the ground and leading to an eruption, we're monitoring that through the GeoNet program. And the GeoNet program is run at GNS Science, and we use the big four of volcano monitoring, just like we would do at the other volcanoes around the North Island. Mm. We have seismometers positioned around Auckland to pick up earthquakes, earthquakes from magma coming up through the crust and breaking it, and also picking up tremor as that magma and gas comes through the crust. Then we've got ultra-precise GPS units positioned around Auckland that can pick up the ground deforming by millimeters 
very tiny movements, but as the magma comes up, it will be bulging and deforming the ground. And we can pick that up from GPS and also from satellites. And then the third thing is we've got chemistry. We can look for gas coming out of the ground. I mentioned CO2. We can, we can survey the ground and look for increased CO2. We can watch for sulfur compounds from satellites, and we can put out equipment to monitor for gases. And then finally, there's visual observation. So we can get reports from the public and people in Auckland. We can get webcam observations and we can monitor from satellite observations. So we bring those together as a monitoring toolbox to hopefully pick up that magma on the rise and give forecasts for what might happen to Auckland Emergency Management to support their decision making and for them to uh, tell the public uh, what they might need to do. And that could quite possibly be evacuation if uh, there was magma on the rise under the city. So it sounds like you've got all bases covered. We can just kick back and relax and just wait for you to let us know. Well, Sorry. unfortunately, that's, that's not the case. Uh, it might not be in your lifetime. The, the, the risk in a lifetime is relatively low, but it could also happen tomorrow. So you need to be prepared for a whole range of emergencies in your home, including volcanic eruptions in Auckland. And for that, you're going to hear from my colleague, Angela Doherty, over at Auckland Emergency Management. That's right, about what we can do to be ready. Hey, thanks, Graham. That was awesome. Really interesting stuff. Appreciate it. Got it. Well